A very good morning to everybody that's joining us today. I see quite a few people have already uh, started to sign in. I'm Neil Mark. I'm on the committee for the e e Exporters Eastern Cape. Um, and I'm in charge of the marketing um, side of everything that we do from, from exporter side. Joining me um, today for our first webinar, um, and there's going to be quite a few more to come, is Kingsley. He's the regional manager uh, west of the Eastern Cape, um, of the IDC. Kingsley, how are you doing? Very good yourself. Good morning, Neil, and good morning to those joining us through the webinar. Thank, thanks for the invitation, and thank you to the Exporters Eastern Cape for hosting the IDC. Kingsley, thanks so much for being part of it. We really appreciate it. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that's going to have questions throughout the session. For those who's joining us on at the webinar jam software for the first time, You'll see on your, on your right hand side, there'll be a chat column. You're more than welcome to ask any questions that you may have in uh, for Kingsley in there. Uh, just to check if everybody can hear us, can I please ask just a few people to say that you can hear us um, so that we can just make sure that everybody can hear and see myself and Kingsley um, on this session. So if you can just um, put that through in the, in the chat uh, session. Um, then obviously quite a few people joining us. Uh, any questions, any suggestions or comments, you're more than welcome to put, to put it in uh, the chat section uh, that is available at this stage. I'm not seeing any comments coming through yet. Um, there we go, Stephen saying, all good. Cool. So quite a few people saying hello. Prince also joining us um, at the moment um, from the bus uh, business chamber. So uh, Kingsley, starting off, uh, obviously, for those that don't know the IDC, just some background specifically on the IDC um, and the regional uh, reach, if you can, uh, if we can start with that. Sure. Um, IDC was established in, in 1940, um, so and it's been self-funding since the 1960s. It's got a total of um, its total assets of of 145 billion, um, and its main objective is to to fund or uh, sustainable growth into Africa. By increasing the industrial capacity, so it's it's in terms is is trying to grow the economy of uh, the productive economy of South Africa. It has fifteen uh, regional offices, of which three are in the Eastern Cape, uh, Mtata, East London, and here in Port Elizabeth. And um, then also lo looking at the lockdown specifically. During the lockdown period, is the IDC open? Um, is there different levels we have to look at, and how do I reach the IDC? Thank you. Um, yes, the, the RDC is is open for business. Uh, we we're fortunate enough to have a business continuity uh, plan that the RDC had worked on uh, for for uh, events like this. We had expected maybe an explosion of our building or or not able to access our head office. But um, so this has come as as quite a different challenge to ourselves. So um, RDC is working offsite. So it's. Um, each person has got a, a laptop, is able to connect via its contacts, is able to set up um, video meetings through um, Microsoft Teams. So um, it's able to be reached on, on its telephones or the phones are diverted and they're operating on the emails as well. So effectively, IDC is, is running um, every day. There are a few initial glitches that we have had, but uh, I don't think that's without any problems. Um, trying to get it to where it is but uh, the IDC is open and running for business and is that on um, like a normal email address they would have had um, before yes um, the email address is pe at idc.coza and the same goes for uh, el at idc.coza for East London and the same for and Mtata at idc.coza but otherwise it could reach me on Kingsley R K N G S L E Y R at idc.coza or, or uh, anyone else. Uh, but if you phone also our head office, it's 011-269-3000. Um, they also would divert it accordingly. So as yes. I mentioned, that, that, that we would be able to, um, to assist on any one of those uh, from any of our current platforms that we have, including our website, which would also give additional contact details. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So they can phone those numbers. They can still email on those email addresses. You are open uh, by uh, email or phone, even if it's lockdown five or whichever specifically. 
If you have to look at the IDC in the Eastern Cape, some of the projects you funded over the past few years, um, could you take us through some of that? Sure. I'm delighted to. Um, uh, Eastern Cape um, has got five billion rands worth of exposure um, in in the province. Um, large projects in, include uh, the Bike SA uh, project, which we still under implementation phase with. We've uh, assisted with Kucha Steels from inception. Uh, we funded a number of wind farms, especially in the initial startup phases. We're setting up a photovoltaic or PV manufacturing plant here in the bay. We have um, we funded the automation and a significant number of um, automotive clients, which is our largest exposure. And then uh, just to give a highlight uh, where IDC has played its role and it has been repaid um, in full um, is Kucha Dairies. And I think you know the, the management of Kucha Dairies have done very well to to pay it off since our, our first inception in 2011. So um, we've got a, a few success stories and it's it's good to be fully paid at the end of the day, which is what our, our role as IBC is meant to be. Definitely. If there's anybody that's got any questions for Kingsley, you're more than welcome to post it in the comment box. I see, um, Sandy, you've joined us in the room, so you obviously came right to, to join. Um, and it, so any questions as far as I will, um, I'll ask Kingsley the question and that he'll be able to answer uh, any, of, any of those that uh, do pop up. And even if you've got any comments or anything you'd like to add on uh, in this morning discussion, we're not going to go on for too long. Uh, obviously, the aim is to keep it in, in nice and short and sweet. And this is, the, for those of you joining us now, it's the first um, of quite a few uh, webinars that the exporters um, Eastern Cape will be doing in the long run as well. If there's any questions uh, with regards to these webinars, you're more than welcome to get hold of Suzanne. Um, from the Eastern Cape uh, exporters. Uh, also looking at uh, the IDC funding in, uh, interventions to support businesses during and after COVID-19, because I think that's probably a big question. People are asking, you know, oh, can I apply uh, during COVID-19? How is the IDC assisting? And, you know, is there the stress fund? Is there essential supplies intervention? Can you take us through that specifically, um, Kingsley? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, uh, IDC established uh, quite shortly after COVID uh, shut down the essential supplies COVID-19 um, uh, fund. So this, this would allow companies with a track r record, meaning that they've been operating in the essential services um, suppliers industry already. Um, so they're e either able to, um, to, to require funding to support their current businesses, to expand their current businesses, to provide those essential supplies needed for um, South Africa to fight the COVID uh, virus. So I, IDC has set up a special task team. Um, so they've actually got their own email address. It's covid at idc.coza and it has a, a number as well, 0860 Um And so there's a specialized team that will oversee um, both the inquiries and the applications that, that come through to the essential supplies um, fund. Um, in terms of what it actually funds, uh, it can fund anything from disinfectants to um, accredited masks, test kits, um, gloves and drugs, um, cleaning and chemicals, um, hos um, hospital equipment, um, quite a, a number of safety, uh, personal protective equipment uh, like visors and aprons um, and those sort of things. So those are effectively, that is what that essential services or suppliers um, fund is for is to say so these are the supplies that we need to, mm. to fight the pandemic and to keep um, sort of the operations running um, in, in those uh, sectors. Then in, in terms of um, the requirements, it uh, requires a track record in essential services. So even though you may be profitable in some other business, you, you can't suddenly just jump into uh, supplying essential services um, or importing, let's just say, gloves um, uh, things. So we would, we would want uh, effectively a company that, that has a track record in, in what they're doing and then uh, applying to the IDC. Um, and even if in the case of importing is to import at scale when there's not sufficient uh, capacity uh, to supply, local capacity to produce and supply. Um, and these businesses must be historically profitable, meaning it must show that it's got the ability 
in the past to um, to make money out of these essential supplies and services. Um, and uh, the, the terms are um, good. I'll start with the, the, the best one, which is our MCEP um, Manufacturing Competitive Enhancement Program loan. And that's running at a 2.5% per annum charge. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a negligible um, charge on that loan, but it must be blended with RDC's funding, which, um, which will come at about prime plus 1%. And then we're able to offer guarantees as, as well on a yearly basis, and you can draw down in, in quarters, but uh, the cost of that is uh, 2% per annum. So um, we could blend um, the, the funding and, and, and then have quite a low cost of funding for, for the supplies to the essential uh, services and essential supplies. Um, so that, that covers the essential supplies. Um, if you, um, just a quick question on that, Kingsley. Uh, when you say track record specifically, um, what does that mean? Like, how long is a track record? Are you looking at someone that's done it for a year? And then also, secondly, added onto it, with a lot of businesses that, uh, for example, they, um, and I'm just using an example here, I, I may have been um, in this trade, but due to COVID-19, I have added onto my trade that I now sell essential goods as well. Does that fit into my track record as well? Or are you going to be looking at someone that, only supplied uh, essential goods before, uh, way before COVID-19. How does that affect the track record? Okay. The, um, the, the, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to assist with how I would understand it is to say if it's closely linked. So mm. if, you, if you're supplying, let's just say, um, some parts of protective, um, I wouldn't even, uh, um, some sort of glove making, uh, yes. for the for the industry so you actually make leather gloves not plastic latex gloves and and now but you're already importing let's just say uh, for the construction industry the the um the pig gloves uh for the construction industry and you're already doing that then th that to me would would form part of um that you would have a track record you've got a track re record of importing you've got an importer's license and so that you're able to to um to deliver on the promises that that you make so we're going to lend you money knowing that you can bring it in without any problem so yes. so if you are going to Im import it is we want to make sure that you've got the skill and the capabilities to to import so that i hope that that clears up the question otherwise you could uh, follow on uh, no, uh, um, i think that that helps with that any other questions please feel free to uh, pop in i see greg did also ask i can see are there any particular sectors uh, the IDC is looking to assist during this time specifically? Um, maybe adding on to um, onto the essential and the distress fund before we um, we get to that. That, that. that sounds great. So I'll, I'll just comment on, on the distress funding, which, which also yeah. talks to, to sectors. Um, so IDC is, is going to provide relief funding to businesses that were affected by the COVID-19 virus and the lockdown. Um, so, in in essence, as uh, Greg's question came up, is that it's still going to be within IDC's mandate. So, um, it's still going to fall within. We've got three value chains that, that we look at: um, metals, chemicals, and uh, agro processing and agriculture. And within those three value chains, we would fit um, our funding of that distress funding into those um, value chains. So there's there's a number of subsectors that fit within that, um, and we can touch on that just now um, with regards to Greg's question. But but effectively, if anything fits within those three value chains, we would look at it. Um, it the the distress must be caused by um, the COVID nineteen. And that, that is an important um, item that the company was previously profitable. Uh, so mm -hmm. what we don't want is to, to fund businesses that had previously problems with management or infrastructure or its equipment. Um, it, it must show that it, it was because of the COVID uh, that it is experiencing um, the, the distress. And then it, it must have a business plan or a plan to show that it is able to turn around um, within a 24 month uh, process uh, and then start making profits after that and it must show the ability to to repay um, the, the IDC over time um, and we're quite willing to structure out the debt uh, suitable to the cash flows as you're putting in in the business plan 
Um, and I think that's the reason for approaching the IDC is this, that we're able to structure uh, financing accordingly. So meaning if your business plan says this is the amount that I need, this is the amount that you, we can give and we can structure it as, as you anticipate receiving uh, the funding back. Um, we, we're also not wanting to fund too many operational um, activities. So uh, operational expenses, we would want to fund working capital and equipment side together with any um, like COVID related like uh, PPE or personal protective equipment or health and safety uh, requirements that need to have for you to operate. So those are the things that, that we would consider um, funding. Um, and then in, in terms of um, that, if you have uh, initial exposures to the banks, um, we would actually then do it on a risk sharing basis. Um, so we, would, we don't want the banks, we don't want to take over, which is uh, excluded. I'll come back to the exclusions now. But we don't want to take over uh, the, the bank's uh, li uh, liabilities. We, we don't want to refinance. And, and that must be also um, um, a point in note. And of, of course, um, we also don't want to fund bonuses and, and dividends. So we don't want the money to flow in and then flow directly out, um, both to the managers or to the shareholders of the business. We, wanted to, we want IDC's funding to remain in the business. Um, so I'll just touch on the exclusions quickly. It's um, refinancing uh, and share buybacks. Um, we, we wouldn't be financing those. Um, I, I, I know people like to have an estimate of costs. So I'm, I'm just doing a rough guide. Um, it's not like the COVID scheme. This is um, just, just an estimate of, of anticipated costs that IDC's debt will be about prime plus 2%. And the guarantees, if you require a guarantee, IDC can issue it at about plus minus 3%. Um, we are able to blend the IDC's funding, which is prime plus two, with, with other concessionary funding, which is like UIF, the MSEP, and a few of the other funds that, that are available. And so we could bring down um, that rate um, to somewhere around prime. Um, that, that would be my best guess in, in, in terms of, of estimating pricing. We don't like to talk pricing, but uh, because it's on a risk basis on the distress funding. Um, and so therefore, some companies m may or have plus or minus around those figures. But I think that pretty much covers um, uh, the, the, the two schemes that IDC has uh, introduced. Um, before we go on, any questions uh, for Kingsley with regards to the distress fund and the essential supplies intervention, please do so. Um, and uh, I'll pass the questions on to him, just comment in the comment box. Uh, Kingsley, when you look at the distress fund specifically, um, is there like a minimum amount, a maximum amount I can apply for, or is it just on a case-to-case basis specifically? Okay. Um, it, it is on the case. IDC's minimum funding is, is always a, a million rand, so you have to apply for, for more than a million rand worth of, of funding. And each different scheme, um, like the COVID, is limited to uh, on some of the funding up to 50 million on the um, MSEP and up to 100 million on uh, in total, um, total funding. Um, but I'm quite sure we could, um, depending on the application, it could go more than that. And then on our distress funding is up to um, 100 million. And um, also, also looking at, at that specifically, so you mentioned that I could take out, say, for example, a million rand, and it could be uh, paid in a, a few months to me, not in a, a lump sum, but over a period. Um, yes. If I understood it correct, uh, would obviously I would only um, start incurring interest on that full million once I've received the full million. So it will be as the lump sum uh, accrues, I, I start paying interest. Is, is, did I understand that correct? That, um we're more going to be um, how we're terming is sculpting the cash flow back to the IDC. So it, it would incur interest. So let's let's say out of the million you borrow, you, you borrow 200,000 up front. We would incur interest on that 200,000. But you're only wanting to start paying us back when your cash flow normalizes. So let's just say after month four. So in, in terms of cash flows, we would only start requesting payments, let's just say, and even ramping it up. So for the next six months, um, and so you're still drawing over the next four months and you get up to a million rand. So you've drawn up over the four million. So only on your outstanding balance does IDC attract interest. But we're not wanting that payment back. So we call that 
called an interest moratorium. So we give an interest break, let's just say, not a, it, it's still due and payable to the IDC, but it, it, it doesn't have a cash flow implication for the business. So only once that interest moratorium period ends, and then we start charging the interest moratorium back, and then thereafter, it's uh, the capital repayments um, start taking place from there. So um, we, we can, uh, we can, as I've mentioned, that you can actually do it over quite a long period of time. Um, and some of our financing schemes go up to 12 and 15 years. So um, we're able to do it over quite a substantial. The essential funds uh, is a bit different. It, it is requiring that payment that's for immediate need, uh, immediate need. And so therefore they're expecting that payment to flow back uh, a lot faster. So um, there, there is a limit um, in terms of, of that funding uh, term period under the essential suppliers fund. Then um, also added on to that, so say I've taken out the loan at the IDC, I'm approved, um, and the, is the repayment date set already, um, or do, do, I, do I contact you when my cash flow is fine? And if the payment date is set um, to, to start, say it starts in four months, but COVID-19 continues for another four months, so after, after four months, I still can't repay it. Can I then contact you and say, uh, Kingsley, um, Four months obviously in the work for me can i start paying in, the, in another two months yes uh, especially if it's related to COVID, and let's just say the lockdown is extended um th that that's why we're introducing the scheme so um we, we would be able to 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 tailor it to the the times but we, we would want a business plan from yourself so as the lockdown progresses, we would want updates from yourselves and to say this is this is what you're wanting to take forward. So we're able to move out um, uh, payments. We can defer payments uh, up to six months um, fairly easily. Uh, but anything longer than that, um, it would take uh, a, a, you know it would take back another submission. So we we are able to to um, move out those payments, and and that's the reason why the fund was. So yes, as as the lockdown continues or as it changes, we're able to to continue to assist the businesses that that have been assisted. Perfect. And the question here from Barry is asking, hey, Kingsley, for how long will the COVID-19 funding window remain open? Okay. At, at present, thank you, Barry, for the question. Um, in terms of um, the closure of uh, the fund, it is um, um, notification will be sent out in terms of when the fund will be um, be closed. We are still in lockdown, so um, we're still receiving um, applications and and having the t uh, team work on that. So there's there's no closure of the fund as yet. Um, so the fund is open and we are working on it there is a limit um i don't remember the the um the mcep limit um but um it it, it is quite substantial I, I if i'm not mistaken it's it, i don't want to hazard a guess um on the webinar otherwise people hold you to it um so uh, um i i would i would estimate so the, the limit might come in that fund itself but then IDC has got its own funds as well as other concessionary funding um, that it is able to draw on. So that essential supplies uh, fund won't be closed, I would say, un until this lockdown, until this period of uncertainty is over. Thank you, Kingsley. Then uh, another question here from Hei Young. It says, hey, Kingsley, are there any funding specific to, uh, uh, towards automotive sectors? Um, automotive sector does. Uh, thank you. I, I didn't quite catch the name, so I'm, I'm uh, of the person. Hi, oh. hi, young. I've highlighted it on your side as well. I'm, I'm sorry, but yeah, unfortunately, um, I, I so can't see the the questions coming through. But um, any, any funding specific to its automotive sec uh, the automotive sector. Okay, automotive has been marked as as a key sector, so it it would be uh, treated as such. Um, so it's actually quite um, it, it's very important to the IDC. It's also the largest um, exposure in the Eastern Cape. Exposure is is automotive, so this is a key sector uh, for the IDC in the province. So um, this. Uh, this this doesn't have a tailored um, specific application, but uh, we definitely 
do put priority on the on the automotive um, side of the business because if um, this is this is the bread and bread and butter of the province um, basis, so uh, um, it, it's very important for for if you are supplying the OEMs that that you stay in business so that you can continue with that uh, localization of that supply. Then a, another question here from Prince. Uh, he's asking me, hey Kingsley, are there any preferential rates or conditions for SMMEs? Okay. Um, thank you, Prince, uh, for uh, uh, for joining. So I, I, I now see um, uh, the chat. Um, apologies for for the delay on that. Um, so thank you, Prince. Um, in terms of the preferential rates. Um, they, uh, we, we've highlighted the, the rates that, that we would use. Um, so we don't have a specific fund that is set up for SMMEs per se. We more fund on the sector basis, but we do have uh, concessionary funds like the, um, the MSEP has been referred to and the UIF funding, and, and there's a number of other funds. So if you approach IDC and you're requiring funding, we're able to to use some of IDC's funding and together with some of the concessionary funding that is available. Um, and, and those details can be obtained from our website, but you're welcome to send me an email as well on those um, specific concessionary funds as well that are available. But effectively, if you give us an application, we can see which funds would best suit uh, your business to be funded. Um, any more questions for Kingsley? More than welcome to ask them in the, the comment box here, and we I will obviously ask it. Um, just to recap quickly in terms of uh, who can apply for these funds that we just mentioned, the essential supplies intervention, and obviously the stress fund. If you could just recap on who can apply for that, Kingsley. Okay. In 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 terms of uh, essential supplies, is anyone who who's actually in in the business of um, supplying essential supplies and services. So if if you consider yourselves under that um, that sector, then we've got a dedicated team, uh, the COVID team, uh, to address your queries um, on that. In in terms of um, um, in in terms of uh, um, the distress funding. We, it would be our, our usual sectors that we would look at, which is agro, um, agro processing and, and agriculture, um, light and, and heavy manufacturing, um, so media and motion pictures, um, the metals value chain, which includes automotive um, machinery and automation, um, and uh, uh, and any of the mining and quarrying businesses, um, then under uh, chemicals any of uh, the pharmaceuticals or um, or consumable uh, supplies uh, funding on the chemicals supplied together with a basic and, and speciality chemicals. So effectively, um, in, in terms of, of IDC, I always try to, to mention to people is just that if you're changing a product from, from one type to another, whether you're using a wind turbine to convert electricity to um, so to converting wind to electricity, as long as you're converting a, a product, IDC would be interested at, at looking at your business. Um, and I, I would say that would be a criteria that, that we would use. Uh, we don't look at, at the services, which is wholesale and importing businesses, unless it's under the COVID um, essential supplies um, mandate. But on the whole, is IDC doesn't look at, at the services industry. So that's including property and, and a number of uh, the other services like retailers um, and, and those sorts of types of businesses. And then um, if you look at it, looking at applying, how do I apply? What will be the, the steps to take? Uh, the, the the starting steps would be a, a business plan. So if you can draw up a business plan which highlights it, um, I'm quite happy even with a, a two-page document which, which highlights three sort of sections is, is marketing, is to say who you're going to supply the products to, where do you see the market of your product, technical is do you have the technical abilities to produce the product, what, what uh, essential supplies do you require to produce that product and that would be your technical and, and the financial is the, effectively taking the difference between the marketing and the technical costs and say so whether you can make money in the process and pay back the IDC. Um, so I, 
I, I think to, to kickstart something to that effect is, is to, to draw up a, a high-level document, and we're quite happy to review high-level documents or to have a discussion, as I said, set up a Microsoft Teams meeting to, to meet on that. And then once I've applied, Kingsley, how, how long does the actual process take? We, uh, um, in terms of once we have an application that suits IDC's requirements, it, it should take between four and six weeks um, to, to have an approval on those, on the product. So IDC has started to streamline its business. Um, it does differentiate, differentiate between complex and non-complex transactions. So I'm talking about a non-complex transaction. Um, it is also in the process, um, a, a, a significant positive, and that will apply to Prince's question that came up earlier about SMMEs. There are, uh, uh, IDC is in the process of restructuring um, the regional offices to handle loans up to 20 million rand. So it is able to uh, to try and get um, that still in project pro process. Um, and so it will take a little bit of time to come out, but uh, I would actually say that would be quite imminent. So we'll be able to provide quite a lot faster response time to um, the SMMEs uh, where funding is under 20 million rand. Then uh, a question here. I'm in the rental uh, industry. Can I also apply rental car industry? Okay. Um, if you supply, so under the COVID um, uh, industries, and if you supply essential vehicles uh, to, let's just say, the army or to the to the medical fraternity, and you're saying this is a, um, then then we would look at under COVID, but under. Um, under IDC's normal funding, uh, we wouldn't consider a uh, rental of assets. Um, so whether it's a rental of a building or rental of vehicles, um, it, we, we'd want to see that, that asset working. Um, so if, um, for an example, if you started up your own Uber, uh, we would contemplate um, uh, something along that where you're providing uh, transport and um, sort of a, a logistics hub um, uh, essential, you know, uh, even outside of essential services, but you're providing uh, another service where, where you're able to do a logistics hub or something to that effect attached to it, then we would consider something along those lines. Um, so as, as, as opportunities arise, which you may see that they do arise, then, then we would definitely look at, look at those options and, and see whether we would consider those or not. Then another question with regards to funding of a purchase orders for essential goods such as PPE. Is the IDC providing funding? What are the requirements for uh, and procedures there? Yes, for um, for funding of um, orders, especially that that would fit under the COVID. As I've mentioned, that there's a specific team highlighted on to address those COVID um, applications, um, and those applications are are handled so they do a basic assessment within a day so that means they have a discussion with yourselves there's a quick uh, response time on these and within a week or two weeks they will take that up for for credit approval process um i've even seen one or two applications taking um a, a short short amount of time and quite significant amounts of money um mm -hmm. under those schemes uh getting approved so um yes the IDC would, um, one of the items for the market side would be in, in terms of actually obtaining um, that purchase order. So yes, we would fund uh, purchase orders. Then uh, another question has come through. Will the IDC provide funding to restart an existing prefabricated housing manufacturing business where government has identified the need for supply to alleviate densely populated informal housing problems? Um, thank you. I, I see it's from Steve. So thank you, Steve, for the question. Um, I, I would like to um, just to highlight that uh, we are trying to look at existing businesses um, while we're in the shutdown or lockdown um, uh, situation as uh, as we are here. So mm -hmm. if we are looking at, um, so we, we're quite happy to look at the, the establishment of um, to restart a, a business. But in, in terms of actually just trying to um, concentrate on existing businesses at, at the moment while we're in lockdown together with providing essential supplies, I think those are um, quite key characteristics. So we, we're quite happy to take a look at 
at other applications at the same time, but those are those are our pressing uh, need at the moment uh, for those two. So we can definitely start up um, something. Uh, if it's a manufacturing entity, uh, which you've mentioned that you wanted to build prefabricated buildings, yes, yes, we would look at those. Cool. Um, then also, how can these interventions help me, the entrepreneur that doesn't fit into the IBC criteria? So what what's my steps? Okay. Um, I, I, I've tried to share... Um, the, I'm, I'm going to be sending out another newsletter today from our IDC CEO, and he he shares a number of of interventions on on different areas. Um, so they include on to uh, the tourism. Um, it includes a, a significant uh, the um, DAF in terms of its agricultural programs, um, and so th that will highlight a number of areas that if it doesn't fit within IDC. Um, uh, there's other relief mechanisms uh, like under the um, SMME fund um, supported through CIFA. Uh, it, it's it's able to um, it, it's able to address some of the needs that that IDC can't can't achieve. So um, the the important one uh, that I've um, which is also highlighted in uh, the CIO's newsletter is is the phrases. It's it's a website under the phrases and it's called support for SA small business and that that highlights it's a very up-to-date um, database of of all the available funding that um, of the sector so I've I've found I've been to the website I found that is very comprehensive so if you if you fit within one of those mandates you could actually look in and it provides quite comprehensive detail on each each one of the funds and and how to access it so that that's a route that I would go if if you're not able to to fit within the IDC sectors is is actually to look at that. Um, so I'll be sending out that newsletter today to uh, the business chambers and to exporters Eastern Cape, and then we can um, and hopefully they can answer a, a number of questions. And I'll attach and I'll do it as a separate link as well to say this is that link um, that it was referred to, uh, which is which is very comprehensive. Um, another question has come through. Is it possible to make a, a one-page frequently asked questions available on your website? So I, I, I don't foresee that has been a problem. I'm quite um, uh, sure that, that, that we can do that. So thank you for asking that question, Darcel. I'll, I'll take that up with our marketing. They handle our, uh, our website and we'll, we'll take that one forward. And, and uh, Kingsley, if you can also share it with us, then we'll obviously also share it um, with all of the members of the Eastern, uh, Eastern Cape exporters. Um, okay. so. Then, uh, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs to be financially assisted uh, during this time? Um, I, I would actually mention is um, is is um, is to have a have courage at this time is. It's courage is, is not the absence of problems. So the problems are always going to come. It's it's our ability to to um, to face those problems and overcome those those challenges. So um, and the I've I was actually just looking back when I was doing this is that I I started working in 1996. So I, I went through uh, sort of the first recession, my first recession in in the 97s when the interest rates was 25 percent. The housing market was through the floor, um, and you know everyone again gave a pessimistic view um, at that point, and we ramped up quite significantly out of that. Then, then comes, um, and again we were in in junk status. Just coming back to that, we were also in junk status at that time. So yes. it was a very difficult time for the economy at that point in time. Then uh, we again hit another crisis in two thousand and eight and two thousand and nine. And uh, that financial crisis also had significant ramifications for the South African economy. And so, and, and now we've hit a, a third crisis, um, which is under the COVID. Um, it's come as a bit of surprise as a virus, not, not as, as other um, external forces. But I'm quite sure, you know, so the advice is to businesses is to say, is to find the opportunities um, within the crisis and to to find a partner that would finance um, uh, one would be idc but it's actually just to find one of those other partners as well as listed in that phrases um, documentation 
there's, there's a number of support from from government at the moment um so maybe just trying to keep knocking on those doors and and to to make sure that that they do consider this um uh, that that this opportunity um and i i often see that that money whether it's idcs or or other people funding businesses money follows opportunity so when there's opportunity um some other do seem to raise um uh, funding uh, to support those initiatives cool um just before we finish off um if you can post your last few questions and any comments on today's um uh, webinar from e exporters eastern cape that'd be awesome we want to know um what you'd like to what speakers you'd like to hear from um, and what topics you'd like us to to raise and to do webinars like this so if you could please comment in the comment box tell us what type of webinars um, would you like the exporters Eastern Cape to organize for you? And we can obviously have a look at what we can do going forward, uh, especially during the lockdown period um, um, that um, will carry on. Then uh, just a, a, also a, a big thank you to all our Diamond members that is part of the S, uh, exporters Eastern Cape and this SJM, uh, Volkswagen Groups of Africa, Propeller, IDC, uh, DG Capital, Ebersbacher, CEDA, Business Chamber, and Oracle Media. Uh, that's on uh, Diamond members of the Exporters Eastern Cape. So any any suggestions on uh, speakers or topics you'd like us to cover in the, in the next few webinars that will come up, which will obviously advertise via email and on our Facebook page, uh, please do comment and let us know on those. Then uh, I see there's two questions that's popped up, Kingsley, and it is, uh, again from Steve, he's saying a water supply has become a serious problem, especially now more uh, precious based on the hygiene needs during COVID-19 lockdown. Would um, desolation uh, projects be regarded as an essential uh, project during this time and in the future? Okay, um, just, just coming back to the question, thank you, Steve, is is um we'd have to differentiate between uh, an essential supply so if you're supplying to the hospitals uh, wa de uh desalinated water um so we'd have to find out you know where the essential supply would would actually lead to so just just coming back if if it's for um let's just say industrial use then then it wouldn't be falling under the essential services uh COVID side but more on the um infrastructure side which we do have a strategic business unit to look into and so we would consider uh, water and water infrastructure as a, as a key component of that so we, we'd like to just to try to take um uh, out of this is that idc would still consider applications like that even though um uh, you know unless you supply in the hospitals or some of the essential services or the army that have been deployed um that those are the items that we would under underwater um provide um water infrastructure that that is the key sectors that, that um idc would fund that now. Um, just another question here kingsley regarding the farms that are in export of fruits and citrus who currently have a cash flow issue as fruits are sitting longer before export what options are available there and that's from leon okay thank you leon for the question i'll just to come back to that i would explore um, the DEF funding, uh, the Department of uh, of Agriculture, Forestry and Fishing, they they have a um, a portion of grant. <coughs> excuse me, um, they they have a, a portion of grant as well that is on on each one of those projects, and it also has funding for those businesses um, due to um, uh, due to lockdown of, of the fruit uh, that's relating in into export. So I, I would first, um, IDC can assist because it would be considered agro-processing um, because the, the fruit is, is being exported. Um, so it has been packed and, and that sort of thing. So IDC could also look at it, but I, I would also try to get um, grants and, and other, uh, to see what other support from government can be obtained first. Uh, so from from DAF would be, I, I would actually say, your first step, Leon. Cool. Then another question here, does the IDC have grants or uh, is it lo only loans? Do you have any special grants for small businesses like mine? Uh, we, are we are in the furniture industry, and that's from uh, Lely. Uh, thank you, McClally. Um, in, in terms of, of grants, IDC's main business is, is not in terms of grants, it's a 
commercial um, development finance institution, so it does it on commercial terms. So, so um, it, it would provide loan, loan funding, but it would, would be willing to take a risk in, in terms of your furniture business. Um, so uh, manufacture of furniture would be included in our light um, manufacturing industry. So yes, we would include it, but unfortunately, um, th that would be a loan finance. So uh, grant funding would be obtained from both the provincial government. There is a scheme called your local rural enterprise development grant. It's called uh, ALRED for short. Um, and you are able to still access um, those funding. The window has opened, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so those would be something that I would go and assist with. And then also speaking to Department of Tourism, uh, Department of Trade and Industry. So I've got, uh, there's also a tourism grant, but a Department of Trade and Industry also has um, some grant funding available. Uh, we do have a, a regional manager here in uh, Nelson Mandela Bay. Um, so you could um, have a discussion with the DTI um, in, in terms of other grants that are available. And then um, I know that you're not in tourism, but the Department of Tourism also has uh, a portion um, available for funding um, businesses to that effect. Okay. Thank you. Then um, just a question here, if you could please mention the website again with the comprehensive info on the different relief funding. Um, and maybe also um, follow to the website, Kingsley, if you could also just go through all the contact information where people can contact yourself um, and anybody else um, with regard to any questions. Sure. Thank you, Young, for uh, the question. I, I'll just, um, it, um, if you Google phrases and the, um, the, the name of the sort of website or that page that it belongs to is called Support for SA Small Business. So if you Google support for SA small business and put phrases next to it, um, it definitely will come up uh, within your Google search. And in terms of IDC contact details, you can email pe at idc.co.za and that would go to um, within our, uh, our Port Elizabeth office and the same with el at uh, idc.coza, which is East London, and umtata at idc.coza. Um, if you're wanting my direct email, it's Kingsley R, K R N G S L E Y R at idc.co.za. And uh, the number that has been rerouted to, um, to our secretary is 041 363 1640. And if you're not able to reach on that, we've also got our head office number 011 269 3000. Um, so thank you very much for the, for the question on, on contact details. Cool. I've also posted Kingsley's email address in the comment section. Um, so it is there if you've got any um, questions for him with regards to this. Uh, please, if you've got any um, any ideas or topics that you'd like us to, to cover in the next few weeks, uh, please do contact us at Exporters Eastern Cape. Um, you can speak to uh, Suzanne or, or, um, with regards to that directly, and um, she'll be able to also assist in guiding us to make sure that we get speakers involved. involved with regards to webinars like this. Uh, Kingsley, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, and thanks for joining us uh, this morning to talk about um, how the IDC is going to be helping with regards to the essential supplies intervention and the distress fund um, as well. I think a lot of people um, now know how to apply and who qualifies for it and, and so forth um, going forward. Uh, thank you, Neil, and to the Exporters Club for hosting the IDC. And thank you especially to our listeners today. And thank you for being online and asking uh, interactive questions. Uh, we do appreciate it. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Just before we finish off, just once again, thanks to our Diamond members at Exporters Eastern Cape, SJM, Volkswagen Groups of Africa, Propeller, IDC, VG Capital, Ebersbacher, CEDA, Nelson Mandela Bay Business Chamber, and Oracle Media. Um, that's our diamond members of the exporters, Eastern Cape. And in Kingsley, you must have a great day. And thank you so much for everybody that's joining, joined us today. Um, and we will post more information on our Facebook page and on our website as well. Sure. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. -bye.